all over the world, from Shanghai to Sydney, London to Los Angeles, cocktail culture is undergoing a renaissance. Here we go, guys. A new generation of bartenders is pushing the boundaries of mixology further and faster than ever before. Let's get down to business, people. Yeah. I'm Spike Marchant. And I'm Dale DeGroff. And over the next four episodes, we'll watch as 44 of the world's best mixologists compete in a series of challenges. Join us on an incredible voyage around the Mediterranean to find this year's world's best bartender. Welcome to World Class, the Olympics of cocktail competitions. Prepare to be shaken and stirred. We're going to be pushing these bartenders to their limit. There's going to be thrills and spills, but no room for slip-ups. And if you do slip up, you better be brilliant in your recovery. It's five years since World Class began, and last year's final in Rio took things to a different level. They had to perform. These are the mountains of Guatemala. They had to create. We need clouds. The level I expected is their highest. This year, the bar has been raised again. More competitors, tougher challenges, and two brutal eliminations, all under the glare of the Mediterranean sun aboard a cruise liner. This is the biggest competition there is. Over six days, bartenders will be stretched to the limit of their skills. These judges are going to know every drink that we know, and they're just going to want to see something different. It's grueling for them. They have to be on their game all the time. I want to win. I really want to win. I think I can win. I want to win. But which of them has got what it takes to win world class? Becoming champion will be about impressing eight bartending legends, this year's judges. We've pretty much seen it all. This is a panel of judges that is not easily impressed. Between them, the eight judges have clocked up more than 200 years bartending experience. These are my gurus, you know. These guys have been my inspiration. These gurus sitting across the bar from you that are the most kind of coveted people in this industry. I think I am hard to impress. I'm judging everybody as fairly as I can, but if what they're actually serving me isn't balanced, they're gonna get knocked off for that. What really separates people is one mistake. Presentation is a big part of what we judge on, but the bottom line is if the drink's not great, you cannot move on. To win this thing, you've got to take a risk. There's one place, you've gotta choose your moment where you've gotta step out and be noticed. Overseeing the gurus, Dale DeGroff, inventor of the modern Cosmopolitan, and world-class ambassador, Spike Marchant. This year, we're going to be really focusing on five key areas of the bartender's performance. First of all, their technique, their creativity, the choice of spirit, then their presentation, finally, the aroma and flavor of their cocktail. The 44 bartenders on board are already national champions. One of them will be crowned best in the world and follow in the footsteps of last year's winner, Tim Phillips. Tim Phillips, Australia! The last year's been pretty, pretty manic. Uh, 22 countries, I managed to fill up a passport, countless cities on top of that. I've actually opened a bar in Sydney as well during that time, so uh, I, I think I've done well out of the last year. This competition is in a league of its own. World class compared to other competitions is like anything else I've ever done before. I mean, it's streets ahead and the, the scale of it is completely different. You travel the world, you make cocktails in the most exotic places. I think it would change everything. To be sort of considered in this group of, of people, I'm so honored. Uh, it's a pretty humbling experience. I think world class is the most uh, professional cocktail competition in the world. It's a big deal. I want to put myself on the pedestal. I want to be the world-class bartender. If I have the blessing of winning, oh my God, it's going to be mind-blowing. It could make my parents pretty happy. I think world-class is for me not just a competition, it's for me a life philosophy. During six days of competition, the elite of the world's bartenders will visit some of the most famous locations in the Mediterranean. Their journey begins in Monte Carlo, the tiny tax haven where 007 first ordered a martini, shaken, not stirred. Next stop, Saint-Tropez, destination for A-listers, movie stars, and the super-rich. 
keen to play the Mine's Bigger Than Yours Super Yacht Challenge. Well, guess what? We win. But unlike other summer visitors, our contestants are on a tight budget and here to work, not play. They need to find cocktail ingredients to make them stand out from the crowd. It's not easy. Coconut water? No. 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 Coconut water? Speaking of the language barriers. Just thank you. After Saint-Tropez, it's anchors away to the Mediterranean's party HQ, Ibiza. There, the bartenders will face one of their most difficult tests, with just half an hour to create two new drinks for a food matching challenge. Guys, from now on, we're all going to have a pizza spritzer. Then, final stop, Barcelona, where this year's winner will be announced in a spectacular ceremony. I would never would have imagined this in my wildest dreams. I'm speechless. Yes. And the winner of World Class 2013 is... With the glamorous Côte d'Azur behind us, we're in the perfect location for our first challenge, the Cannes Red Carpet. The glamour and excitement of the Cannes Film Festival is the inspiration for this challenge. Bartenders are expected to create and serve a drink that, if it were a movie, would run away with the palm door. We want to be entertained by both the presentation of the cocktail and the performance. But the star of the show is what's in the glass. I've practiced a lot for this. It's just the usual preparation for competitions, but stepped up about 10 notches. For every round, I think I've got something a bit different. My uh, signature serve is for Audrey Tattoo. So I'm going to make her a champagne cocktail with no champagne in it. Um, I've made my own uh, vermouth. It's got a lot of lemon peel in it. Because it's Chardonnay, I can call it a Blanc de Blanc champagne as well. And this will be served in a lovely ice bucket. And because she is a superstar, we'll be garnishing this with flash photography. I'm going to be doing a version of a blueberry martini for Elizabeth Taylor. My name is Cross Yu. I'm from China, Shanghai. I like any drink, but normally I like something to use the shake. That's the most cool part, which is for the bartender. Chinese Kung Fu shaking. <laughs> Woo like this, like Bruce Lee. My style, I prefer to say Shanghai style. So we get technique, Japanese really crazy detail. And I like dancing, you know, because I work in a club. It's my stage. I think I could be the Bruce Lee in the bottom. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's the show time. Here we go. Ego one. The ego's coming. I show the judges my kung fu kind of style of things. They love it. Love the mountain. Oh. So the inspiration behind the cocktail I'm going to make you is, is Raging Bull. Thank you. It's a lot about the social skills. It's no fun to just look at a bartender and he's just making a cocktail, not saying anything. You want the story, you want to be entertained. My father was only talking about one actor when, he was, when I was a little boy, uh, and that was Sean Connery. I mean, he's from Scotland, right? So we're using Singleton. I am from uh, Umeå, about 1,000 kilometers up north from Stockholm. We have a lot of nature, and we had a lot of berries and a lot of herbs. You only find it in the northern parts of Sweden, so I work a lot with like Arctic raspberries and, and cloudberries and a lot of different herbs that grows in the mountains. So I got 40 mils of Arctic raspberry. Now we're just going to shake this up. <laughs> I saw an interview with Mr. Connery. They, they asked him, what is your favorite candy? He said, sweet licorice. So I made a sweet licorice foam. Got some smoked salt. And it really goes well with the licorice. Cold yeah. and cold is a wonderful uh, creation. From Scotland with love. Thank you. The Cannes Red Carpet Challenge is done. It's 
behind us. Yeah, it was interesting to see who would really embrace the challenge. Cross you from China. Brilliant technique. Yeah. That long pour with the teapot. <laughs> Sean Connery was picked by Emmy Lerang. <laughs> He's going to be fun to watch. Crime and Crompton from the Cayman Islands. He was all round very good today. How about Gareth? He took a cocktail, tried to include some of the elements of champagne, and then his final presentation really polished and, and a sense of humor about that that I enjoyed. So, Spike, out of 44 bartenders, I think these guys are real contenders. I feel pretty confident after the first challenge. Uh, it went uh, as I wanted. I, I got some fun stories to tell, so that went well. They seem to like it. Salvatore asked me for the recipe for my vermouth afterwards, so that can never be a bad thing. So you might not know, this guy is the fella that took the cocktail of the Cosmopolitan to legendary proportions. Thank you very much. But I had a pretty high-profile perch up on top of the Rainbow Room. And by the way, what really put that on the map is when Madonna was pictured drinking one, and that picture went around the world. Dale is going to show you how to make the legendary perfect Cosmopolitan in 60 seconds. The Cosmopolitan has four simple ingredients. Fresh lime juice, good citrus vodka, good orange liqueur, and cranberry juice. I'm going to begin with a quarter ounce of sour, followed by three quarter ounces of my sweet ingredient, orange liqueur, an ounce and a half of my strong ingredient, followed by an ounce of cranberry juice. Now we add the ice. Let's shake it up. We shake it a good 10 count so it gets really woken up. And then you break that seal. Dump the ice out of your nicely chilled glass, and away we go here. If it's not opaque, you didn't put any fresh juice in it. Find yourself a really fresh, very firm orange. Let's take a little kitchen torch to issue a little bit of oil. Boom, over the top of that drink, and I'm gonna drop it right in. The perfect cosmopolitan. Okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> Next, the competition continues to go with a bang. <laughs> One contestant starts with a damp squib. I did some stupid mistake. And another develops a split personality. <laughs>sailing off the coast of Monaco, and the bartenders are down below in our infusions lab, preparing for the second challenge, time to play. As well as having time to play, the bartenders have also had plenty of time to prepare for this challenge. It has been designed to test their ability to create flavors which will enhance the base spirit. This challenge is one of the most difficult. I mean, these guys are in new territory. They're using ingredients and equipment that they're simply not used to. And they have one chance to get it right. Despite knowing about the challenge, there are still some surprises in store. Ingredients include red oak bark, star anise, birch leaves, hibiscus flowers, rose petals, and black mustard seed. Emphasis is on something new, something original. Don't play it safe. We've got about 40 different botanicals. Experiment, have some fun. A highly developed sense of taste and smell are vital for a successful bartender. But not everyone is embracing the concept with enthusiasm. It takes uh, you know, master blenders decades to perfect this. We've got one hour or so. And some are already showing their competitive spirit. Oh, I, uh, I have a lot of great thoughts in my mind, but uh, I don't want to share. I'm Jeff Bell, representing the United States. I think the person that's going to win is going to have the best understanding of the spirits used and how they develop cocktails out of those spirits. My goal is to make sure that I've brought out all the flavor profiles of that particular product and create a balanced cocktail around that. So what I did is I infused a bunch of herbs and botanicals in this bottle. No, you guys did. I didn't do that. That's already been infused. So I'm going to leave that alone right there. I think it's a beautifully made gin and it doesn't really need to be enhanced with more botanicals. It's just a tincture I made uh, yesterday in our lab. The two of the botanicals, angelica and licorice root, are in here. My goal was to create flavors that accented Tangeray 10 instead of actually changing the flavor. The sweetening component of this cocktail is going to be a lime cordial. Next is the gin. Two ounces. I took the flavors that are already in the gin, and I infused different ingredients to bring those flavors out in an old-fashioned style cocktail. So 
basically pulling four flavors out of the gin and, and putting them on stage. So here's the gin in old fashioned with angelica licorice, lime cordial, and aromatic garnish of coriander. Hope you enjoy. If the challenge is about the gin, then make a cocktail that's about the gin. I'm Monica Berg, and I'm from Oslo, Norway. I think the judges are looking for something, obviously, that tastes delicious, but also they want originality and people to really showcase themselves. So yesterday, I had one very clear idea when I went in, and then as soon as I saw the ingredients, everything else was wiped clean because the first two ingredients I saw was dandelion and nettle. And it was one of my first memories. My great-grandmother and me, we were always picking these dandelion greens and make, she would make it into a salad. So I made my infusion with dandelion, nettle and milk pistol. Then I'm going to use 15 ml of nolipra and then just a dash of Maresquino. When I was young, I always, um, or in my garden, we, I used to have a sherry tree. So this drink is all about childhood memories. For you, sir, I have the Queen High coffee. Enjoy. Thank you, Thank Thank you very much. much. Since it began, head judge Spike Marchant has been involved with World Class and has devised all this year's challenges. Uh, Mario, over here. What have you got cooking? Looks like some hibiscus, some rose petals. I'm doing an infusion with hops and mixed with egg white. That'll give me a flowery, creamy flavor profile that I love. And then you get that sweetness and, and the lovely aromatic note of the rose and the hibiscus. Exactly. Exactly. It's like multi-dimensional flavor thinking. Absolutely. Rocking the Puerto Rico style. My name is Mario Seijo Rivera, and I represent Puerto Rico. This opportunity has changed my life. Good, I have the opportunity to meet so many people, good people, very talented, and at the same time, I have learned so much, and that's where I get to the bad part, you know. I've had to struggle a lot. I have missed a lot of days of work, you know, and still I have bills to pay. And uh, I had to come here to the competition and left my wife behind sick. And that's something that, for me, it's not, not funny, you know, no. You already know my name, Mario Sejo from Puerto Rico, AKA Dr. Jekyll. I got inspired in a situation that I'm living right now in my life. We're gonna start with an egg white. I have to leave my wife sick back home, so that was kind of bitter. So I made an infusion with hops. I'm here, my mind is here, but my heart is back home and everything that might appear to be bad, I have to work it out and turn it good. And, you know, just keep learning and keep taking the best out of every experience. She encouraged me to be here. So I made another infusion with flowers. Let's do some straining here. I have rose petals, a little bit of mace. And for aroma, I'm going to burn this a little bit. And that is my lady. In each round, bartenders make two drinks. And for his second, Mario develops a split personality. <laughs> I'm Mr. High now. <laughs> so let's have some fun. For his second drink, Mario is making a Scarcelli, named after the bartender who created the Negroni. So this is one of my secret ingredients. Negroni is my favorite cocktail. I'm crazy about that Negroni. <laughs> Instead of a regular uh, Campari, I'm gonna use an Apro, which is more fruity, more, you know, orangey. I've had the Negroni in New York, in Miami, in Puerto Rico, shaken, steered, barrel aged, with tequila, with rum. It's so quiet. I, I, my bar is not this quiet when I'm working. Mario's bar, Santella, is one of the busiest in Puerto Rico, the cocktail capital of the Caribbean, which is also birthplace of the Pina Colada.
It's an honor for me to, to present the cocktail that I'm going to make to Gary Regan because he loves Negronis. To top it off, we're gonna have orange peels. There's the Scarcelli for you guys. Over six days of competition, the eight judges will see more than 500 cocktails being made, some involving unlikely flavor combinations. I uh, infused some gin with some strong ingredients like licorice and rooibos tea. I'm uh, Laura Schacht and I'm from uh, Zurich, Switzerland. I like to improvise. I like challenges like the gin competition where we have the lab for the night and then can create something new that's like really interesting. And because I don't want to use um, an egg white in the drink, I will, oh my eggs rolled away. I will use a foam of egg white. My challenge went okay. I did some stupid mistake. I um, shook some egg white and it wasn't oh, that foamy that foam anymore. Just give me a second. So I had to shake it again and then just lay it with a spoon on top of the drinks. They definitely realized that there went something wrong. A boot like lady. Laura knew she'd failed to shine, but what did our head judges think? Poor Laura. Her egg foam just wouldn't stand up. There's a lot of ways to make egg foam, and maybe shaking it in the shaker wasn't the best one for her to choose. Talking about one of the other female bartenders in the competition, Monica Berg, and again, she remembered growing up in Norway, so there's a lovely story behind it. Let's not forget Mario from Puerto Rico, huh? I really enjoyed him today, actually. He's he a contender. Very eye-catching. It's a difficult challenge. We've given them a complex spirit with many botanicals and spices in it. What I noticed was some of those bartenders actually opted to leave the gin alone and created infusions using other spirits to work alongside it. Could have been a really good way to go. <laughs> Next time, after a visit to Saint-Tropez, one more challenge before the first elimination. From 44 down to 16, it's tense and there are some big surprises. Your time here at World Class is over. To learn more about bartending and the world's finest drinking experiences, go to our definitive drinking guide online.